Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Erin Knight here, founder of Engineering Radiance and creator of the Migraine Freedom Program. I am here with a special guest, uh, Beverly Ryder, who is an expert in histamine intolerance and migraines. And I'm excited to talk with you today, uh, Beverly, about your analogy with uh, chihuahuas and, and histamine. It sounds uh, will help us understand what it is, um, what the role is in our body, why it's not always a terrible thing, but how you know sometimes it can get overloaded and over, overwhelming, and then actually contribute to migraines for some people, for a lot of people, really. And then we'll also talk about uh, why daily antihistamines are not the uh, long-term solution that I used to think they were. <laughs> I was on them for years, and then I realized that they aren't really uh, solving the root cause, and they have some side effects. So we'll talk about that, too. Um, and yeah, as I ramble on, <laughs> let me let me welcome Beverly. <laughs> Say thank you for uh, you know just being here with us and sharing your knowledge. And um, tell us a little bit, just briefly, about yourself, how you got into um, get, being passionate about the links with histamine and and migraines, and then we'll we'll get right in. Yeah, thank you, Erin. That was a a nice introduction, very personable. Um, thank you for having me. How I got into migraines and histamine. Well, um, my background is a PhD in immunology and I learned a lot about histamines and in trying to solve my own migraines for most of my adult life, histamines just sounded like it was just too simple. So I tried absolutely everything else, um, even um, Botox injections all around my yes. skull, 50 injections and yes. down the back of my neck and um, everything. So histamine just seemed too simple it, it, uh, for the amount of pain I was having. Finally, I did a trial of um, eliminating histamine and it was, it was really life-changing. It, uh, it was just night and day and it was quick too. Um, I'm not saying histamines, antihistamine, natural antihistamines are the panacea of, of all migraines, but for me, I tried everything else and it was the final thing that I hadn't discovered yet. And with as quickly um, as you got results, you said in 48 hours, you noticed like absolutely. If somebody's it's, struggling, they should at least try it. <laughs> it's a great empirical test. There's no really good um, precise test for histamine intolerance or even histamine overload. So it's a really good way to figure out if it's a problem for you. So um, that was a little bit about my background. Um, and physicians aren't going to really, if you go to your physician and say, I have histamine intolerance, they're going to look at you funny. It's not really a uh, clinical entity necessarily. It's more of like a term to describe what's going on that can lead to symptoms. So, um, but even having a PhD in immunology, I can firmly say that this is um, a very under-recognized um, mechanism um, leading to migraines, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so what is the role of histamine in the body? Like why? You know what's the job like why do we need actually need some of it but how does it get out of control? yeah histamine has a lot of different functions it's absolutely essential it's, it, it gets a bad name but if we didn't have histamine we wouldn't think straight we probably wouldn't digest properly it's a neurotransmitter it, it plays so many roles in the body but in particular um, immune defense so it um it's it's on patrol for invaders it's almost like a little yippee chihuahua that is um, it's looking for strangers and it sees a stranger and its ears perk up and it, it, uh, if it feels threatened, it starts barking. It calls in other chihuahuas and other bigger dogs to deal with that intruder or invader. And over time it calms down, um, and rests. However, if it, if that stranger is something to worry about, then it doubles its efforts and, and really gets aggressive. However, sometimes our body mistakes things for being aggressive when they're really not. And this is, mis um, this mistake is, for example, with allergies. Like seasonal the allergies. Pollen, yeah, yeah, the pollen is an invader. So that yippee chihuahua calls in other chihuahuas and it's overreactive. So the solution isn't to get rid of that chihuahua, but to calm it down. And the way of doing that, um, is not taking an antihistamine necessarily because the antihistamine will block at the receptor level, but it won't do anything about to the histamine that's circulating, um, mm -hmm. the yippee chihuahua. It's just mm -hmm. plugging its ears. It's doing la, 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 I don't hear you, where the yippee chihuahua is still barking and you're getting other symptoms. It's not mm -hmm. healthy. 
And so it and might help in the short term, but it's not really helping. Like yeah, if somebody's taking absolutely. it for years and years, like I was, <laughs> or every yeah. spring for their seasonal allergies, you're kind of like going like, why is your body, why is your immune system off, right? Like why are yeah. you having this reaction to something that's not really yeah. harmful? And you're not alone. Uh, most people do go that route. So the antihistamine, it blocks the receptor, but then once it is washed out of your system, then you have symptoms again, and it becomes almost like a, a cycle. You have to take it. Unfortunately, it comes with side effects. Um, it's expensive as well, but it's something people don't really appreciate is that it's actually dampening or slowing down um, an important enzyme that clears histamine. So it's so slowing the level of histamine um, the longer term. And that means that it's actually making it worse long term. Longer. There are natural ways for histamine to be reduced. There's natural antihistamines. And um, that like quercetin that and things like that? Or? Absolutely. Quercetin is like a bioflavonoid, it's in apples, um, onions, and other things. There's lutein in celery. Um, there's a lot of other um, bioflavonoids in fresh fruits and vegetables that are, are really good. And I have a little a demonstration for you here. Oops. Oh, good. Just, are you putting that, are yeah. those helping you clear things faster or are those blocking the receptors also? Clear things faster. Clear things um, faster. So they're actually helping you yeah, get rid of absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Covering it up. And this is, um, I keep in my windowsill like a little cup of water with either parsley or cilantro and wow. little herbs and things, and that's, or mint, and that, those are packed with bioflavonoids. So what I'll do is just pick off a few leaves and be eating them throughout the day, and that's really helped. It's a really easy way of, of having uh, bioflavonoids, vitamin C, throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Ah, cool. Um, yeah. So if somebody is switching to more natural ways to manage it as one, how else can they reduce um, histamine in their body? Um, you said you have like a Great check question. to help kind of like yeah. <laughs> lessen I the load. Is it seasonal too? Like somebody might do this a little bit with more gusto in the spring. Pile. Absolutely. Yeah, That's a great, yeah. That's a great point is you're not going to be suffering all the time. Um, and there are things you can do to, you can step it up during times where you've got a high histamine, um, during, if you're having a lot of migraines, like you said, uh, seasonal allergies. Um, but eliminating alcohol is a big one. Alcohol, like antihistamines, it works on a lot of levels. It blocks the removal of histamine, and it actually contributes to the release of histamine, and sometimes even has histamine within it, within the alcohol, such as wine or beer. Um, also want to avoid dehydration, stress, lack of sleep, it's actually some fundamentals I go through. I call it the West, the water. It's W is water. D e is exercise, but not too hard. And yoga would be perfect. Um, S is for stress-free or at least stress reduction. And next S is for sleep. Um, sleep with a circadian rhythm. It, um, whether you get seven, eight, nine hours, I don't think is a big difference, but try to sleep when it's nighttime. I think that's important. The histamine has a circadian rhythm to it. So sleeping with the nighttime, if you can, if that's possible, is very helpful. Limiting processed foods is huge, especially some um, artificial ingredients such as yellow number five, tartrazine, is known to um, worsen histamine problems. Um, processed foods in general, um, don't eat food that's gone bad, like anything that's even remotely um, old or aged uh, could possibly be bad. And less processing, again, for, so if you had a choice of grapes or raisins, the raisins are more aged and more processed and, and could have more things in versus grapes, which would still have all those fresh nutrients. Um, Ditching sugary foods, avoiding leftovers, um, especially um, protein, high protein leftovers, such as your meats, your shellfish, your fish, things like that. Um, lots of different suggestions. So I have a. Really, it sounds like stepping up the self care here in general, <laughs> which absolutely. is a good, good true. I mean, this is true whether your migraines are cyclical with 
your period or with yeah, yeah. storms or the seasons too that's a time right. to recognize and if you can't be perfect nobody can be perfect all the time at least you can like try a little right. harder during those times and that will support not perfect the- <laughs> okay <I know. laughs> support like the underlying thing because we, t- uh, we didn't really get into it yet but like you've mentioned um this is a genetic propensity sometimes for people to have slower clearance of histamine but all of these fundamental things like you know supporting your circadian rhythm and eating less processed food and fresh food and things like that will yeah. actually support your um you know your genetics <laughs> to be at their best yeah. and and support any weak weak spots there so that's really step one like before we fiddle with yeah. supplements or anything like that is to do all these good habits um absolutely absolutely and you know taking taking the time and creating space to take care of yourself should be non-negotiable just mm-hmm. really supporting your own system strengthening um, your body especially your gut your digestion is going to be really key I think these things start in the gut and we know that gut damage um, can directly and indirectly worsen histamine because histamine is actually degraded by the enzyme produced in the gut so the enzyme is in the gut takes it out so if that enzyme is lower then you're not going to get the removal of histamine so we have this this overwhelming um, uh, dysbiosis, almost like e- epidemic. This um, our microbiome, our mi- microbiota is is uh, less healthy, less um, diverse, and I think that's really going to be key, a key part. So, really diversifying those species is really going to help. There's species that degrade histamine, or species that increase histamine so it's mm. it's really about the gut it's looking back so after gut. you've identified this maybe do some gut testing some gut healing absolutely not with probiotics yeah. and bone broth <laughs> <laughs> some yeah. probiotics are helpful <laughs> yeah but okay. some aren't so <laughs> it's, yeah, it's be more careful about that um, yeah. so i guess that's kind of answering my next question but i'm thinking about you know if somebody's just identifying this is this they might be wondering is this going to be a lifelong Thing that they're managing are they going to be able to become more resilient over time and you know as they heal their gut is it realistic to expect that it'll just become easier and easier fantastic question i think a, um, a lot of advice from some people not not too many is to remove all these histamine foods um but some of them are very healthy and yeah. actually help the gut diversity and gut strength so this is going to be so eliminating some histamine high foods can be temporary just to get symptom control and as an empirical test is this going to work if it does help then heal the gut and add these foods back in and it's also it's in the amount or the accumulation so say you really want your kombucha then you can add in some fresh berries, which would maybe have um, have bioflavonoids, which would counteract that histamine, or add in some um, pea sprouts, or moringa, or um, ginger, curcumin, things like this that are anti natural antihistamines, and then you have a nice um, a nice partnership of of histamine and antihistamine. Mm-hmm. But yes, as you heal your gut, um, you should be much more tolerant of histamines. Okay, that's good news because nobody wants to be restricted yeah. and like, you know, yeah, it's, overly limited for years and years. Like this could, and healing the gut is an overnight, it's not an overnight process, certainly, but we need to have some hope that, <laughs> and I, I can share personally as things have gotten better. Yeah. I didn't even know I had histamine issue, but like talking with you and looking back, I had... I was like some people have problems with mosquito bites and I would be like <laughs> deathly afraid of mosquito bites because they would get huge and I would have yes. like really big reactions. And I, I'm quite sure this was part of my story. I just never knew Absolutely. about it like 10 plus years ago. I didn't know. But as my gut has healed, I have, you know, I don't have mosquito problems as much, hardly at all. Yeah. Like I don't hardly notice them and things like that. So I don't have seasonal allergies anymore. So things have just gotten easier and I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to histamine foods. Although some of those on the list, like you don't, you do maybe want to avoid <laughs> like the wine and the beer. 
<laughs> and, yeah. and then some like the citrus or other fruits you really don't want to have to avoid. So I think yeah. the good news is that it does get easier, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. So um, I've been putting together a checklist of all of different foods to, to test, try to remove different lifestyle, positive um, solutions and even some supplements and as a checklist for when people come to me and they say what well, where can I start and if I tell one person you need to ditch the sugar then they'll say okay bye-bye I'm <laughs> anything else but that or uh, maybe someone alcohol is the thing they, they really like their alcohol and they don't want to do that so there's a list of about 50 different things that someone can try to reduce their um, their alcohol their histamine and it, it, any um, contribution to reducing it a little bit should help. Mm -hmm. There are people with genetic um, enzyme deficiencies or methylation problems, or um, there's a number of enzymes involved that could be genetically um, um, poly polymorphisms, basically, SMPs. So they may need to do a lot more. But that group, um, they could maybe check off 40 of the 50 things. And intuitively, I think you, they would know what is going to be the triggers because they're going to be very sensitive. And some of these things are going to be short-term, some of them are going to be long-term. But for people that have, even have just seasonal allergies once in a while, even if they check off a few, they may find some symptom relief mm -hmm. and, and long-term healing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I like this approach because a lot of people with like um, people are writing about histamine intolerance and things like that. It sounds like all or nothing. Like you will not get results yes. if you ever have one. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's absolutely not like that. Or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah no, it's absolutely not like and figuring out what works with people's life and things like that. There, refreshing. Yeah, there are some mast cell disorders mm -hmm. and other genetic issues that it is probably better to eliminate a lot of things and even a little of something could send them could be kryptonite for them mm -hmm. um those are the mastocyte mastocytosis things like that are are kind of outside the scope of 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 this uh this piece of work yeah okay yeah so this will help a lot of people though who have migraines yeah um histamine or seasonal allergies and know that that's kind of contributing and triggering their Yes. The keeping a food log, keeping track of your foods and your symptoms and your mood over time, I think is very effective in finding your own triggers. It's really the first step is finding what you react to. Okay. Good. Any okay. final um, final thoughts? I think this has been um, and informative, but any, anything you want to Yeah. I think, uh, I think we... I think histamine issues are definitely under-recognized. We've heard the term antihistamines that people just kind of gloss over it. How can this be involved in my migraine? But it was really, um, histamine is a pretty powerful molecule, and I think it can help in a lot of other ways that we're not even aware of, such as the brain fog. Um, it even, and I like to think about it as histamine as the, um, the purge kind of molecule or the expel. If you think of everything that histamine does, almost everything, the watery eyes, the coughing, the sneezing, um, even the vomiting, the diarrhea, it's all to get rid of things. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the, the um, drippy purge kind of mediator of getting things out. So even a rash could be getting things out mm -hmm. and the opening of blood vessels for the white blood cells to extravasate into the site of injury it's getting things out and getting rid of things so yeah that's cool, about yeah. it and yeah definitely <laughs> okay well we'll put your website here in the in the comments so people can learn more and kind of stay tuned as you're finishing up the book uh, i'll be excited to share that when it's when it's out uh do you have a title yet uh yes i do it's um it's going back and forth but something to do with uh heartburn headaches hives and um heartburn headaches and hives it call it the histamine hangover oh okay it's a little like a hangover mm -hmm. like into oh. alcohol <laughs> like an alcoholic hangover okay and the okay. website that you have the mm -hmm. uh, writer for health 
website. It's more to do, um, that's more to do with the DNA SNPs, the single nucleotide polymorphisms, that, that website. But I am going to do more histamine stuff on there and I'll put the checklist on there too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Thank okay. you for sharing. And hope, you know, if you guys are listening and you have questions we didn't address or anything like that, by all means, put it in as a comment. Absolutely. We'll, you know, stay in touch and things like that. So thanks for listening. Okay. Thanks for being here. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, bye. -bye.